about things not yet seen in holy fear what built an art to save his family by his faith he condemned the world and became heir of righteousness that is in keeping with faith and you know it's so faith and and coming together with the things of god these things are important we must we must serve Jehovah. we must serve god with everything that it is in us god is god is 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 everything it is impossible for us to move into this next space and this next dispensation without serving god wholeheartedly it is it, 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 you know when you get around someone and someone says you know, I love God, or I'm I'm a Christian, I'm a woman of God, I'm a man of God, you know, well, when you get around them, there's something about discerning, I discern, you know, you discern, you discern, um, you discern, or try the spirit, by the spirit, and to see if it be of God, but it shouldn't take you a whole long time, because what comes from the heart reaches the heart, and if I come to you with a pure heart, well, why would you come any other way? See, so these are techniques and skills as not just believers, but as people that we must learn. We must learn when we're entertaining angels. We must learn when we're entertaining the woman of God, the man of God, so that it, we can't, the man and the woman of God can't be offended, but you can lose your position by not attending or or being focused properly. So we want to keep our focus. We are given here what the definition of faith and how it is appealed or applied, how it is applied in our lives. Today, let us look at four key figures in these verses, as I read earlier, and realize what the Yehovah will reward us if we keep what our spiritual focus in this what busy hectic world. Got to keep our spiritual focus. Before we discuss Abel, Enoch, and Noah and Abraham, let's examine the word diligent keeping spiritual focus isn't a hit and miss proposition. You have to work at it all the time. I mean, I'm challenged on it every day. Every client that I deal with, I'm challenged on this on this text of keeping my focus, staying focused. And you know, typically, one of the things I do is I let's say, for instance, if I see it's an opportunity, but well, my well, one of my downsides is it's not a downside for me; it's actually an upside but it would be considered a downsize. One, uh, you know, to me, anything that has to do with service is for, I think, Christians should own. If it's a service, because we're servants. The greatest office that we could ever obtain is that of a servant. So we serve what? We serve others. It's not about me, but it's about others. When Charlene, when, 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 when she left, there was nothing I could do but make sure that I had the ability to help her whatever she went through. Because what I did was I, I looked at myself because somewhere along the line, I allowed the enemy to slip in. You know, where, where there are two more joined together, where, 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 where God is joined together, let no man uh, bring asunder or take, take apart. How did, what did I miss? That allowed, if God brought me and my, my wife together, what did I miss that caused me to lose that and lose my family? What did I miss? What, where, was I, where was I not paying attention? So that's my take on it. That's not for everybody. I'm not telling everybody that they made mistakes. I'm just basically talking about me personally. So I work on this daily. Now, I'm not telling nobody else to, but I work on this daily. As we read the story of Cain and Abel, what? We found out a secret to spiritual focus. One offered his very best to God, and the other just tried to get by. 
in a walk with Yehovah, with God, we must what? We must make a decision. Are we going to give it all we have got or just try to get by with second best efforts? I have went just, you know, sometimes you get, you know, and I mean, you know, the whole time you're trying not to, you know, because people are constantly trying to take you off off base because that, you know, you have to be careful because they're so carnal and so fleshly. And you just sit up there and, you know, I mean, like from, and I am, I'm human, but I don't use that as an excuse. See, most people use that as an excuse. You know, all have sinned and fallen short of God's glory. But through Christ, we can be made perfected where he made us perfect, but he's perfecting these beings. And it's a daily practice. So if you make a mistake, it's a good to know that you realize that you make a mistake and repent. But when you got pride and envy and strife and all that stuff in your mouth, listen, you don't want to repent to anything because you just think you're right. You think you got all the answers. You think you're in the proper position. You think you think you know what time it is and all that and all the elements are in place and don't even realize that you're functioning on your man-made skills, which will soon deteriorate. Listen, one thing that is for sure, why it's important for us to keep focused. I don't care who you are. All of us have to prepare ourselves. At some point, we're going to die. Now, I... I um, I did my father's eulogy uh, this year. He was 80, and you know it, it's still it's still relevant. It's still real to me. And you know um, even some and, and, and it bothers me when I get around people that try that position. But I have to keep my focus because yet I'm still in that grieving process of the loss of my father. Today, I was, I was, I, for some reason, I wanted to go, I was going to meet somebody at one place, and then something, I was talking to my son, and my son had to go to this office at another place, so I said, well, maybe I can meet these, these uh, individuals at Starbucks. I'm standing outside of Starbucks, and all of a sudden, I seen one of my first cousins. I mean, I'm talking about, you know, what well, is the likelihood of me running into Danelle and her kids and her friend in Cherry Hill? I'm, 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 I'm like hit and miss and I'm like in the cut, you know, and I seen them and it was so beautiful because I have been doing a series on alienation to reconciliation, alienation in the home and in the family. And how it talks about in the book of Malachi 4, I believe it's 6, that God is what he's drawing the father's heart towards the children and the children's heart towards the father. And this has to happen lest he curse the whole land, the whole nation. Amen. So we understand what was going on. Our prayers are giving what? Are giving us worship. And our witness, if we get our get out of focus, will fall in every area of our lives. Every area of our lives. People can see that, you know, when you're dealing with bitterness, you're dealing with anger, your tone, you know, blah, 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 blah. Well, okay, listen. I mean, you know, uh, I mean, it works when you deal with people in the natural but people, when people are flowing in the spirit, when they're flowing in the spirit, it doesn't work. That doesn't work. That that when you when you're flowing in the things of the spirit, that doesn't work. Why doesn't that work? Because we're going to go back to a scripture that we read earlier, and I'm almost done. I'm almost done. Listen, I pray that this is a blessing. This has been a blessing to me because you know. One of the things that I want to do right now more than anything is I want to make sure that I'm sharing the portions of what Yehovah to people, nothing else. I want to make sure that I'm sharing the portions of Yehovah to the people. It says, 
it says that in Hebrews 12, I'm going to read, I'm going to read three. No, I'm going to read two. Fixing our eyes on Jesus, the pioneer and the perfecter of faith. For the joy set before him, he endured the cross, the scorning, its shame, and sat down at the right hand of the throne of God. I'm looking to unto Jesus. I'm looking unto Jesus. I need to have the ability to focus on the things of God, other things of God. I can't look at nothing else. I know everybody wants me to do this, that, and the other, but I, I can't do it now because I'm looking unto Jesus. You know, I started, I started even in myself trying to focus and understand this scripture with why God was giving it at this particular time. Do you know I found myself, I found myself deleting numbers of people that had known years just as contacts because why? I had to be, I had to be able to understand one thing and one thing for sure. Why is God saying this and why is he saying it now? Enoch, a consistent walk with God to fully understand Enoch's life. We must read what, uh, um, I think that's uh, Genesis, Genesis, uh, Genesis, let's try Genesis 5, help me Holy Ghost. Uh, start at verse 22. Verse 22. Let's see what it says. He says, After he became the father of Methuselah, Enoch walked faithfully with God for 300 years and had other sons and daughters. Altogether, Enoch lived a total of 365 years. Enoch walked faithfully with God and then he was no more because he took, God took him away. God took him away. Uh, we find that Enoch had what a consistent walk with God. He kept his focus by building a close relationship with God. It is impossible to keep focus if we become distanced in our relationship with God. You won't please God until you know God. And if you don't diligently seek after God, you don't expect to receive his, what? His rewards. If you aren't close enough to reach out and touch him, then he won't be close enough to reach out and touch you. You don't please God just by service. You please God by surrendering or surrender to what? To Jesus. Jesus said of Yeshua the Messiah, I no longer call you servants, but I call you friends. A servant gets only what he deserves. Friends get special blessings that are above what they even ask for or could even dream. Noah's what obedience prepared an ark. Noah kept his spiritual focus. When I'm sure you ever get around somebody that doesn't know you, you don't know them for the first time. And when you come around them, you know, now whatever you're doing, you're doing what your, some cases you may be doing what Yehovah told you to do. Okay, God told me, for an example, to start this radio broadcast three years ago. And, you know, I just, I make sure that I come and I say something encouraging as the Lord gives it to me. Now, I could get four or five people to tell me, oh, you need to do this, you need to do that. Well, what needs to happen is God needs to probably say something to you because he didn't say that to me. I'm doing what he told me to do. So you have to keep focus because no doubt they were laughing and talking about Noah while he was building that ark. People, people want you to uh, uh, agree with their agendas and all that stuff. Just you know, you know, when all you need to do is just accept it. Hey, listen, I accept that. That's what God is telling.